I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Anchor. Mayor Steam. Present. Council Member at Large Austin. Present. Council Member Haley. Present. Waller. Present. King. Present. Pashusta. Fisher. Present. Baskin. Present. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Item, item number one is a motion for adoption of the agenda with the addition. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item two is a motion approving the minutes from October 7, 2019. Need a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, introduce introduction of new police officers. Chief, where's all your new police officers? Hopefully getting uniforms in the cities. Our uniform vendor who is supposed to be on site today, measuring them and getting them their uniform ordered, uh, called in sick, I guess, last night about 9 o'clock. And since he was not able to come down here and we we're under such a limited window to get them outfitted uh, and get things in stock, the lieutenant did run the four officers up to Roseville this afternoon to their store up there to get them outfitted in their uniforms. Otherwise, we would not have been able to get them on the road in two weeks. And tell us about them. Uh, we had four get sworn in in a ceremony this morning. Uh, Zachary Gass, Jeffrey Marks, Hannah Mueller, and Samuel Diggins. Uh, this room was filled. They had a great turnout from their friends and family. One of our officers, speaking of calling in sick, also got uh, a little case of botulism <laughs> the, <laughs> night, the night before the swearing in. As he traveled up here, he was unable to attend the ceremony. However, he was out of the hospital in time to come down. Uh, it was Daniel Osborne. We did swear him in at City Hall this afternoon at 2 o'clock. So all have official start dates of the 21st. He should be back with us tomorrow. This will be our single largest group the city of Austin's ever started at one time. Uh, if everything goes well, they'll train in-house for two weeks. They'll then begin FTO training uh, with our FTO officers. We actually have two more of our officers going to school next week to become FTOs to be able to handle the influx of officers. And by probably mid to late January would be the time that they can actually begin handling and taking calls on their own. And and counting towards uh, our actual schedule. And three of them are local, right? Uh, yes, Jeffrey Marks is from our area. In fact, he was an explorer probably 17, 18 years ago. He is coming back to the area. And Hannah Mueller is from our area, a Mankato State, State grad. Her father and brother work for us. Uh, Samuel Diggins is a Riverland grad. Uh, had been working some hours over in Grand Meadow, but also from the city of Austin. Have three brother, sister, and father in the department? Law enforcement tends to foster. <laughs> no question. Well, you're asking me to do math, Mayor, and the whole reason I got in the profession was not how to do any math. So we definitely have some, fa some uh, family combinations oh, uh, within our department and other departments. So, okay. yeah. That's good. Okay, great. And the one guy, to his first day on the job, was a, he took a sick day. <laughs> in effect, yes. <laughs> it's only going to get better from here. <laughs> You're correct. That's so, not really fair. Chief, okay. where does that put us on um, total number of officers versus authorized? We are authorized for 34. We've been at 29. The, these five officers put us back at 34. Mm -hmm. So from, a, from who are we paying standpoint, we're paying 34 of our authorized 34. It's just they won't, we, we say count. They won't be on their own to handle calls and actually count towards our calendar until the middle or end part of January. Good. And we know, we know, I mean, it's unusual to be up to 34. We know that's going to go down again as retirement. Yeah, it's been, it's been very unusual for us to be at 29. We usually are at 32, 33. Hopefully, we'll be at 34 for at least maybe six, nine months. <laughs> we also have our part-time CSO starting either today or tomorrow. And we have a full-time CSO starting next week as well. So. All right. Well, thank you, Chief. Um, number four, we need a motion for the consent agenda. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, number five, under petitions and requ requests, is a motion appointing Hurray into one. Steve, you know, anybody know how to say his name? Mm -hmm. He's going to be our, our honorary council member. With Hervey, aye. 
Pardon? Probate <laughs> guy. Probate guy, yeah. As an honorary council member starting Jan November or January, he'll be here next meeting. So we need a motion for that. So moved. So second. second. All in favor? Right. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, re six is a motion and ordinance reviewing an amendment for to the nuisance ordinance. Ms. Wallace? Oh, uh, we just have, uh, uh, we're asking the council to amend the ordinance to add the word junk into our ordinance. It's in our definition already. Um, talking to our city attorney, we felt that you know we could get by, but this is a better way to do it. So we're making that uh, amendment. Council, any questions or comments? If not, we need a motion for preparation of the ordinance. So moved. Is there Second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And then we need an ordinance for adoption and publication. Move for adoption and publication of the ordinance. Second. second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Ordinance passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. Seven is a resolution accepting a donation of property from the Friends of the Hormel Nature Center. Mr. Nelson. There was an 11 acre tract on the north side of the Hormel Nature Center, which uh, the Friends wished to donate to the city, and that process is in order at this time. Anybody have any questions? If not, we need a resolution for seven. So, so resolution. Second. Mr. Dankert. Council Member Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Council Member at Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0. Your Honor. Thank you. Eight is resolution approving health insurance plans and qualification. Tish? Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, before you tonight are two resolutions. One is approving the health insurance plans and the qualifications for those plans. And then the second is the city contribution for the non-union employees. Um, since going fully insured in 2019, we no longer have the need to approve, our, approve or set our own rates uh, for the um, insurance premiums. So PEEP, who we're with now, they pass along and they let us know what our rates will be. So we have those for 2020, um, minimal rate increases for 2020, so that's good. Um, so a little different this year, so it's just approving the plans, qualifications, and then the contribution for the non-union. Council, any questions, comments? If not, we need a resolution for nine. Eight. 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 So move the resolution. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you, Nine. The resolution approving the city contribution for non union employees. Trish, same thing? Same thing, yeah. <coughs> Questions? If not, we need a resolution. So moved. Second. Uh, Mr. Dankert. Councilmember Helly. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. 10 is a resolution approving a bench rental agreement, Mr. Lang. Yes, U.S. Bench Corp has uh, benches located around Austin. There are about 15 locations, and they sell advertisement on those. Those benches are located in the public right of way. So, this agreement before you tonight establishes a uh, rate and an agreement to allow for those benches to be placed in the public right-of-way. Uh, we've been doing this for many years now, and our revenue agreement with them is $1,080 over two years. So we would recommend uh, approving this bench agreement. Council, any comments, questions? If not, we need a resolution for 10. So, so second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Haley. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Councilmember Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Thank you. John 11 is a resolution approving an ICM agreement with LL Parks LLC. Mr. Lang. Uh, the MPCA allows us or requires us to work with industrial users throughout the community for discharge of strong waste into our sanitary sewer system. So we have about eight um, ICM agreements, and we bring those to council periodically for um, reestablishment. And what it does is it allows us to charge or manage uh, strong waste dischargers to charge them extra, whatever 
they discharge above and beyond normal household use. They are charged extra for that. Uh, and the theory behind it is that it costs the community extra money to invest at the wastewater treatment plant for that strong use. So therefore, they are pay paying their fair share. In this case tonight is an agreement with LL Parks LLC. It is similar to previous agreements regarding um, the things that we regulate. That would be their flow, their strength, uh, their total suspended solids, their nitrogen discharge, and their pH. Uh, this is a three-year agreement, which would expire December 31st of 2022, and we'd recommend approval. Do these levels change? I mean, do we change the levels in our agreements from agreement to agreement? No, if, if things are working, we tend to keep it the same. If, if someone is exceeding their limits, we'll work with them to make improvements at their facility to try to get those back down within the limits. Okay, and we um, do that a lot, don't, I mean, I've heard you talk about that. Too. Yeah, yep. Uh, Parks is one that we brought to you a couple of years ago now mm -hmm. regarding a discharge mm -hmm. of solids or what turned out to be uh, shavings that were coming out of the back of the trucks that were getting by their system. They've made some improvements there. They've worked with the University of Minnesota to see how they can capture more of those solids before they're sent on to the city. So that seems to be improving. So we recommend um, continuing with the same agreement as we have in the past. Thank you. Any more questions from council? Comments? If not, we need a resolution for 11. So move the resolution. Third second. Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Helley. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. 12 is a motion stating the city does not waive the statutory tort limits for liability. Huh? On an annual basis, the city is required as part of our insurance renewal to pass a motion authorizing uh, me to sign the um, document regarding statutory tort limits. In the past, and as we'd recommend going forward next year, is that the city should once again not waive the statutory tort limits so that we're limited, uh, have limited liability based on any statutory loss that come towards us at half a million dollars per occurrence or 1.5 for anybody involved in that single occurrence. If you were to waive that statutory limit, that opens yourself up to a massive potential lawsuit dollars above statutory limit. So once again, we request council approve um, not waiving the statutory limits. Thank you. Uh, any questions or comments? If that, we need a motion for 12. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, 13 is a motion granting a planning and zoning department to power to contract for the removal of junk and or illegally stored vehicles at the following locations. A106 2nd Street Southeast Fuller property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. B804 Avenue Southwest, the downer property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? See. 1017 9th Avenue Southwest, Integrity Real Estate Property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? D201 31st Street Southwest, MCB 4 Property. Need a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And finally, E410 and 410 and 1 half South Main Street to Wisemore Property. We need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're now to citizens addressing. Oh, wait, we got an addition. Okay, 14 is a resolution reviewing KSMQ project documents. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Members, uh, before you, we have uh, some documents to follow up on the KSMQ project. Um, help. Uh, progress along the project. The first is a lease agreement. This is a 10-year term, as members will recall. The uh, city owns uh, underlying interest in the building and, and land in a partnership with KSMQ. Uh, there's two, three, five-year renewal options as part of the agreement. Uh, property is deeded to the tenant at the end of the lease, which corresponds to the useful life of the building. Uh, in relation to the eventual deed grant, uh, there's 118,000 is held against the property. Uh, for a total of 35 years and uh, from the 25 to 35 years one tenth is rebated um, back off of that amount that would be owed if they would move 
um, outside of the community. Uh, there is no rent, um, but the expenses will be borne by uh, KSMQ. This includes taxes, assessment, and utilities, and the like. Um, but still, uh, we highlight the city contribution is capped at the 475 that we've talked about. Uh, maintenance is that of KSMQs of the building insurance and those items. Um, this has been reviewed by our city attorney. Um, Mark Murphy is here yes. in the audience, uh, representative of KSMQ, and can add any comments or Mr. Byram if there's anything in addition, but those are some of the general uh, components of the lease agreement. Mr. Murphy, would you like to make a comment? To uh, I'm just here just in case anyone had any questions. Uh, Does anybody have any questions? Well, we're happy the project is going forward. Right, yeah. Thank you. Okay, then we need a resolution approving a lease use agreement with KSMQ Public Services Media Inc. Uh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Are there any questions on this before? Okay, I'm not sure I asked that or not. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any, uh, Mr. Danker? Council Member Helley. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Aye. Re uh, resolution passes 6 0. Yeah. Resolution B approving a development and construction agreement with KSMQ Public Services Media Inc. We need a resolution. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Mr. Danker. Council Member Helley. Aye. Waller. Aye. King. Aye. Fisher. Aye. Baskin. Aye. Council Member Large Austin. Aye. Resolution passes 6 0, Your Honor. Okay, that's basically we're at part of the council meeting where if anybody in the audience has any questions or comments to make, uh, this is the time to do it. If not, we will start. Uh, Mr. King. Nothing, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, nothing, Your Honor. I have nothing, Your Honor. I have a few things. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's all right. Um, first, I want to uh, acknowledge that uh, the Austin High School community experienced the death of one of their students over the weekend. So, as a community, we um, acknowledge that and then extend our, our sympathy um, to all the, the students and families involved. Um, Secondly, uh, later this week on Thursday, the 24th, the, there will be a um, presentation on arts and culture as a growth industry for rural communities. Um, we're bringing over a couple of people from Winona who launched um, a fine arts commission in Winona a couple years ago to hear about um, what they've done and how it might apply um, for us in Austin. It's a free presentation, um, Thursday, October 24th, noon at the library. Um, no, no need to register or anything like that. Um, and there's more about that on Facebook if you want more information. Saturday, um, downtown Austin is hosting Fall Fest, which includes trick-or-treating um, for the kiddos. So uh, come on down 11 to 1, I believe, are the hours um, for trick-or-treating at downtown businesses. And then finally, um, there will be a ribbon cutting for a leg of the Shooting Star Recreational Trail. And so the ribbon cutting is Monday, October 28th at 5.30 p.m. at the Hormel Nature Center. So. A lot of folks um, log a lot of miles on there and they've, they're they ready to celebrate. Join them if you can. Uh, two things, so one, just wanted to thank all the city staff and everybody in the community acknowledge what a wonderful governor's pheasant opener um, that was done. So I think we had 400 plus people at the banquet on Friday night, about 170 hunters. First time this sitting governor has actually gotten a pheasant. So we've got that over the previous eight. <laughs> um, but was it your pheasant that got flushed? I keeped, or? We keeped it up for him. It was running, and he, I, we saw it. He mentioned it, and it was running toward the tree. And me and uh, from the nature center, or not from the nature center, from uh, DNR. Yeah, from the conservation club. You know, we kind of kicked it up, and the governor shot it. So we were there. It was exciting. It was really exciting. The governor was very excited. Nine years. It's the first time the pheasant there. The governor's got a pheasant. I think he actually got two, but we didn't find them. <laughs> after our exhaustive look yeah but I, I think overall i mean a great community event and i think a lot for our community to be proud of even the conversations from people around the state very impressed by austin and the level of hospitality so um definitely something we should be proud of second piece is 
Um, Austin obviously is a welcoming community. As part of that effort, um, we were honored to have the opportunity to be a small number of cities that was granted the chance to travel out to Washington, D.C. next week. Um, to discuss with other welcoming communities the work that's going on across the country as well as meet with uh, congressional delegations. And so I'll be going out with Sarah Karki from our Human Rights Commission and then um, Fatima from Project Fine over in Winona who's also a welcoming community. So Where's that at? Um, out in DC. So we'll be meeting with most of our congressmen and senators um, and then we'll be having kind of a pre-session with, I think Atlanta is down there and there's a couple of other um, places. So a pretty small number of communities that had the opportunity to have that grant. So we should be very proud of the work that we're doing in Austin and we'll report back on what some of those conversations were about. Thank you, Jason. Paul? Uh, Craig? No, I don't. Uh, Stephen has an item, I guess. Stephen? Uh, yeah, actually two items. Since you were talking about KSMQ tonight, just to give you an update, demolition of the property is complete. That kind of finished up last week. Uh, we're looking now to see if we need to add any more material before we turn it over to KSMQ, but demolition went well and things are tracking within budget, so we'll finalize those numbers and report those back to you uh, sometime soon. Uh, the other item I wanted to mention tonight is um, tomorrow night, MnDOT is having an open house at the library from 4.30 until 6 to discuss uh, I-90 project that they're planning for next year. The project is going to go from Highway 105 or Oakland Avenue West over to Petran Corners. I, actually, I believe it's opposite. I think it's eastbound, so it'd be from Petran Corners into Austin. Um, this project is something that they are accelerating because funds became available for them. So uh, they're accelerating this project and moving it up a couple of years on their schedule. But again, that open house is tomorrow night from 4.30 until 6 at the Austin Public Library large meeting room. I'm sorry, you said that was MnDOT? Correct. Accelerating a project. That's correct. That's because exciting. money became available. <laughs> because money became available, it gets better and better. That's Thank you. <laughs> okay, is that it? Anybody else? The only thing I have is the pheasant hunt was fun. Did you get a bird? We did, yeah. You did or we did? My dog flushed it, and uh -huh. we let the guy from the trap team shoot it. That was a much better <laughs> shot. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Uh, I just held my guy. Anybody involved in that could not have helped but be impressed. I mean, Holiday Inn was just filled out there. There were 170, 100, 400 people at the banquet. It was fantastic, and I heard so many. I asked the DNR, one of the DNR guys who's been to every one of them, and I said, how many have you been to? He said, all of them. I said, well, what's the best one you've been to? And he said, right here. He said, the birds were good. He said, but you had it organized better than anyone we went to. I think Nancy is, is, is you know, gets a lot of credit. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I hate to overlook anybody, but I know Nancy did a lot of work on that. and. Uh, we're proud that uh, the job she did, and it really put a good face on Austin. Well, with that, we need a motion to adjourn to Monday, November 4, 2019, at 5.30 in the council chamber. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.